Hello humans! Welcome to the Reason and Science Eventually podcast. Welcome back everyone and thank you for listening, thank you for staying on this channel. I haven't updated for a while and I kind of realized that I started off this podcast thing without really knowing what I was getting into and I kind of knew that the updates would be sparse and kind of not very recurrent. But, you know, since I'm not getting paid, this is just for fun. This is just to keep you updated with what's going on and I'm also open to your suggestions and things that you would like me to say. Uh, so here are just the last few things that happened over the last couple of weeks, actually. We haven't spoken for several months. I kind of realized that last time we had an update that was the first Reason and Science podcast, A Quintessence of Dust. I recorded that last summer, yes, before going to Burning Man in 2013. Now I'm about to go to Burning Man 2014. So 13, 14, it's been probably more than a year, so I kind of apologize for this long delay and I will not have the time to explain what happened over the last year, or kind of 13 months of life, it's been kind of a ride. So I'll just update you with the last few things. So if you remember, so if you remember the beginning of this podcast was, uh, as you know, hello humans, and that was kind of an unintentional Thing that I started off last year and the topic for today's podcast is human need not apply and that means yes one of my favorite youtubers CGB Gray has made a video about robots jobs automation and the workforce and needless to say he nailed it he made a very compelling understandable digestible compact video so the topic was huge usually he can take a very difficult topic and distill it into a three to four minute segment and for this one it took him 15 minutes i think the longest video he's made on any other subject was probably maybe five minutes maybe six i haven't checked but it's, you know usually between three and four and this one was 15 minutes it kind of broke off everything that he has done before and He's been working on this video for at least nine months because that's how long it, it took since I received an email from him asking for some additional resources because he has uh, he's watched a lecture that I gave. Actually, it was TEDx Vienna back in November of 2012, I think. Yes. Wow. It's been that long. Okay. Anyway. No, it can't be. Yes. Wow. So anyway, uh, about nine months ago, he contacted me by email asking for some additional information about the number of jobs in the US. And I gave him some reference and a copy of my book. And he said, oh, great, I'll take a look into it. And lo and behold, he actually used my book as a primary reference for his work. And it's now listed on his website and blog. And if you go to cgpgray.com, you can find my nice little cover of the book. So I was really, really happy to see that. Not so much for my book, but because he used the research that I've done and that was useful to someone. And actually not just someone, because the video has been up for probably two, three days now, and it has about 1.5 million views already. And my guess is that by the end of next week, it will be something like around three to four million people. So things are starting to roll. And as I predicted, finally people are starting to understand and it's becoming part of the global conversation. So again, I do not care if my name is attached to anything. All I care about is that we talk about these issues because I think it's a global problem that everybody needs to kind of deal with. Uh, and the, the sooner we deal with this problem, the more likely we are to come up with a good solution instead of kind of just going with the flow and hoping to not have a catastrophic effect on the whole of society. So that was my intention. That was my hope. And 
I'm really, really happy that uh, things are moving. So if you haven't seen the video yet, go and check the description of this podcast or go to my blog or the YouTube video correspondent of this podcast that you will see and you will find a link to CGP Grey video. And he's also given a nice response. Uh, I've uploaded the video response and he has tweeted about that saying that, uh, you know, he, he used my research and then he was going to add that to his website. That was very nice of him. So go check out Humans Need Not Apply by CGP Grey. Uh, next, I wanted to update you on some really, really exciting things that I've been doing. And I think the most exciting is my new startup. So I, I made a big, big, big pivot from my previous company. And so I decided to just completely start anew and have a different name and a different strategy, a different team. So it's all new. It's still about learning, but it's completely different. So here it is. Uh, the new company, the new startup is called Konos. It's spelled K-O-N-O-Z, but it's read Konos. It means I will learn, I will gain knowledge. And so what, what essentially is, it's an online platform that integrates e-learning and crowdfunding in order to have the best content, free and open to all, while supporting creators for their work. So the idea came really from uh, being inspired by Louis von Hahn, who's the founder of, of Duolingo. And he's an amazing person. If you, if you don't know Louis von Hahn, just Google his name or Duolingo and watch his TED Talks. He's an amazing guy. Essentially, he said, you know, there, there are very, very big problems in, in society and you know, in, in the world in general. Um, and usually problems taken individually, they seem humongous and almost impossible to solve. But if you find another seemingly unsolvable problem and you combine the two problems together, sometimes they cancel each other out. And so you solve both at the same time. You, you know, uh, catch two birds with one stone to have to, to use an expression, but I don't like that expression. So, you know, you, you, you solve both problems at the same time at zero cost or close to zero cost. And so the two problems that I have identified, you know, through a lot of, a lot of pain and travel and talking to a lot of people from South America, from uh, Taiwan, uh, Europe, North America, from Africa. It was, you know, great content, great educational or learning content is not usually available for free. It's usually behind the paywall. And even the platforms, let alone the content, which is, you know, the, the big hurdle, but even the platform to use for delivering the content Usually the best platforms are not available to all. And again, there are huge fees to pay and only the best institutions and the most, well, maybe not the best, but the ones that have the most money, let's say. <laughs> They're not necessarily the best, but the, the most lucrative institutions can afford and the rest is kind of screwed. So, and uh, you know, and the third problem actually, that's the, the additional is if somebody makes great content and he makes it for free, uh, there is not really a way to pay them because YouTube is based on advertisement money. And so YouTubers that are into entertainment can make a lot of money because entertainment is easy. You make a two, three minute video and you get lucky and it makes two, three, four, ten million 10 million views and you make, you know, 50, 100, uh, 150, 250 thousand dollars a year maybe if you're an entertainer, but if you make educational content, those numbers are reduced by a factor of two or three. So you have to divide by a hundred or a thousand, which means you're not making nearly enough to sustain yourself. And you usually have to do something else as your day job. And this learning uh, or teaching skill that you have, you may be the best teacher in the world in that particular topic. You can't really do that because you don't have enough money. So there you have, again, the money problem. So can we solve our problem? Like, would it be possible to have the best content available for free and at the same time support the creators of the best content? And so I think we find a good solution and uh, we're going to launch the website very soon. We have a kick-ass team of four people who are working essentially full-time every day nights and days, 
weekends included, you know, we, we work until, uh, this is last two days I've been working until 4 a.m. And this is not a joke or a, just an expression, literally 4 a.m. And, uh, but uh, we're making progress. So the website is called Konos Learning. So it's K-O-N-O-Z learning.com. Konos Learning, and uh, you can pre-register and it will be ready in a few months, in fact. Just in the last couple of weeks, we found uh, some people who want to support us financially, which is really good. And we have been accepted to the Summit Alpha program. And when I say the Summit, I mean the Summit. That's right. It's this, this thing is so important that they don't even need a middle name. It's just the summit and it's a, it's a bit of a boast but you know they can aff- they can afford that to do that because they are the world's largest and leading startup and investor event so it happens between november 3 and 6 in dublin and they select very very few startups to be a part of their alpha program and uh yeah, they, they give you all sorts of interesting rewards and uh, contacts and access to investors and uh cool things to do and people to meet and it's, it's really awesome and uh, the whole team is going so Fabio from Sao Paulo in Brazil is flying over from South America Chris our CTO uh, is coming from Belgium uh, Brussels in Belgium then my good friend Sirio uh, uh, from Verona and I will be flying I don't know where I'll be but uh, we'll, we'll all converge to Dublin and we'll have the first Konos meeting, physical meeting all together, which is really, really nice. And I was really excited to to hear that we were accepted this alpha program. Uh, and uh, if you are a startup or if you're an investor, if you're just somebody who like a hacker who's into the scene and uh, just happens to be at the summit uh, on November 3rd in Dublin, come check us out. It's uh, Konos Learning and uh, the, uh, the name is spelled K-O-N-O-Z. So there you go. And then just a couple of days ago, we got an email from MIT. They have a, a business plan contest. It's called MIT Chief. And we've been selected as semi-finalists. So we're on the second round and uh, we hope to do well. And, uh, and j- j- just, uh, again, a couple of days ago, I'm almost at the same time, Verizon. Uh, Verizon has a powerful awards answer. Uh, sorry, Powerful Answers Award. It's uh, $1 million for the best <laughs> um, innovative startups that bring uh, you know, innovation and uh, great new ideas for delivering better education and blah, blah, blah. And uh, we've been selected for phase two. So uh, I think there is three phases. And if you win, uh, you get a million dollars. So that's nice. Um, and you know we, we are we are happy that we went to phase two. It's a good validation, and even if we stop here, um, at least we'll you know we'll have some validation of what we've done, but also we'll discover and find out what we did wrong, and uh, that's if we lose. And if we win, then uh, it's good. <laughs> and then just yesterday, um, BBVA, which is another competition in uh, South America, I think it actually it's in Mexico. And uh, we are finalists on their Open Talent 2014 uh, competition. So yeah, four big ass events, programs or contests. uh, uh, And we got into the second phase or the final phase of uh, these four. So that's that's really nice. So, you know, it's it's been a long, long, long and tedious uh, amount of work. So 16 months of banging my head against the wall kind of eroding my life savings, trying to do everything I could. And then now finally things are paying off. I, I have a new project. I have a kick-ass team and they're really, really amazing, both in terms of, you know, what they can do professionally, but also in terms of uh, kind, the kind of people that they are. I'm really happy that I have these amazing collaborators with me and I, I couldn't be happier. Okay, I have a few other events coming up. So September 24th, I will be in Amersfoort speaking at IT Talent Day. And that's in the Netherlands. Uh, and this, the next day, September 25th, I'll be speaking at IT Innovation Day. 
Uh, IT Talent Day, I haven't decided yet the topic, but uh, I think it's going to be something about uh, entrepreneurship and uh, uh, because it's it's a younger audience, I think under 25. IT Innovation Day, I was speaking about Bitcoin. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, not the currency, not so much the currency, Bitcoin, the protocol. So I was talking, I'll be speaking about the blockchain. I'll be speaking about all the amazing possibilities that this new technology is, which is probably one of the most revolutionary things that has ever happened ever happened ever and i mean as big as the fucking internet so yeah that's how big this is in my opinion uh if you're interested come to amersfoort on september 25th in the netherlands at it innovation day and you'll be hearing more about it and then on october 3rd i am again in the netherlands i'm speaking at the economics and business student faculty at the university of groningen uh, which is the EBF conference, and uh, apparently I'll be sharing the stage with the founder of this founder and CEO of Kickstarter, which is kind of nice. So um, maybe we'll uh, have some interesting things to talk about about crowdfunding and see what he has to say about my um, my platform at Konos. All right, so that's it for updates. I wanted to keep this brief, just letting you know a few things. And, uh, oh yes, the song, right. So the song that you heard in the beginning. doing a Jamendo playlist thing that's that's what's happening uh, so if you don't know Jamendo shame on you go on jamendo.com right now and uh, I've been meaning to do this for years but never got to so whatever now I'm doing it um, so I'm taking one of the Creative Commons licensed songs that I like or that I think are nice to put into this podcast and of course, I'm giving attribution, just like uh, the, their license says. So this track was uh, Copenhagen by Figures in Motion. It's a French band from the album Confusion Will Pass. And the album is from uh, March 30, 2014. So go check out Figures in Motion. Uh, they release their music under Creative Commons uh, attribution only license which is amazing so kudos to you also good song all right thank you for listening and i'll see you next time